So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple just released iPadOS 14.5 Beta 1 to all of the developers and we're going to find out exactly what's new with it. I'm not expecting too too much, but Apple did just release that about a week after releasing 14.4 to the entire public, but let's get right into it. So let's hop right into exactly what's going on here. So if we go into the actual images first, I did take a screenshot of how big the actual file is. So as everybody can see there, it was about 4.58 gigabytes. So again, give yourself twice as much storage, at least nine gigabytes, if not a little bit more in order to really get you know the most out of this update so you don't, get, you don't run into any issues at all. So that is the size of it. And then if we go into the actual build numbers, so we're on 14.5. So we go to about, click on that 14.5, look at this. So we're actually on model J. I believe the last release, we actually just got all the way to F, I believe. So we didn't see a J, but this one's 18E5140J. Meaning this is again, the very first one that we're gonna see. So hopefully they just get better and better as time goes on. And then again, the only difference that I saw is actually when it was resetting itself and updating itself. So I'm gonna put a little B-roll right now showing you that the new startup screen or the boot screen now has a landscape oriented Apple logo when before we just had it always in portrait mode. So at least we get some sort of, you know, iPad specific, you know, orientation startup. I wonder if we're going to get that on the actual iPhone. I doubt we will. And I don't think it's going to rotate depending on when it's booting up because I don't think this accelerometer is on when it's booting up like that. And then the only actual update that is in the release notes has to do with WebKit and it's for iPad OS and iOS 14.5 and it has to do with security. So it basically says that Apps and websites can now get privacy preserving attribution for ad clicks that navigate users to websites. So I believe it's just a way to track actual advertisements and basically saying, hey, if you do want them, these are the types that you're getting. And if you don't want them, you shouldn't be getting them at all. And again, we saw that with the new update with Facebook and basically Apple allowing you to decide, hey, Facebook, you can have my data or hey, Facebook, no, you can't have my data. And then in terms of known issues with this update, so there was a couple known issues. One of them has to do with sharing notes and reminders. So now you can actually share your notes and reminders that came with an update, I believe last year. But apparently when you share locations or map locations through the notes application, it's not really working right now. I haven't had that issue, nor do I use that situation or have that situation ever. But again, that is known there. And then also not really to do with the iPad unless you use your iPad for CarPlay. But if you are on CarPlay and you're sharing your ETA while using CarPlay, then there's an issue that doesn't really work. And the only way to do it is when you share your ETA via the Maps application directly as opposed to sharing it through CarPlay or something like that. But those are the only real known issues when it comes to 14.5. And again, we're probably going to see a lot more. But again, the only real visual differences that we saw were the new boot screen and that new privacy preserving attribution setting that, again, Apple's just doing to make sure that we stay safe. But that's pretty much it. Let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like I mentioned, there weren't too many visual changes. Some of the things that I still wanna test out, supposedly now you can do Face ID with a mask on as long as you have your Apple Watch. Now I believe that's an iOS specific feature and I do wanna test it out on the iPad, but again, it's a little bit different because your Apple Watch isn't connected to your iPad and it's like this weird thing. So I haven't been able to really test it out. And I also don't have the beta program for the Apple Watch. Or I do, but I decided not to do that because I don't like to mess up my Apple Watch since I use it as a viewfinder all the time. And then another thing supposedly that's been added, which I can't test because I don't have any of the new consoles, there is PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox controller support. So if you have those systems, give it a go, give it a try. It should connect the same way that the Xbox One and the PS4 controller is connected. But like I mentioned, all in all, that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to check channel sponsor Paperlike if you guys need to protect your screen. I always say that the best accessory to have is a screen protector for your iPad or iPad Pro because that is the main way you interact with that device, whether it's by touch or by pencil. And Paperlike just makes it a lot smoother to write with and it's a lot more pleasant experience and there's that anti-glare feature. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like. If you smash that like button, it really helps the algorithm out and push this to more eyes and hopefully grow this channel. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time.